Hello, welcome back to Baldur's Gate, the original saga, episode 78, Under Drummer here. Just finished another quest with Minsk and Dynashir. Oh, we gotta go back and pick up Imolin. <laughs> I nearly forgot. Looks like we're going to have to fight our way out of here. Yo, Rum Jake fool, I knew you'd be back. Let's get back to traveling the good road, eh? Sorry, kiddo, but I don't need your company. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Let's get going. You bet, we'll nick ourselves a whole purse of fun before the night is through. Bam, she back. Everything as it was when we left it. City is a blight on the landscape. Better to have let the land grow wild. All right, let's catch a good nap, and then we'll uh, head over to Baldur's Gate. I'll guide the way with my sword of flame. Baldur's Gate lies west across that bridge. Here we go. 78 episodes to get here. Huge bridge. Okay, this is like the opening scene in Spaceballs. There we go. Flaming Fist Mercenary. The entrance taxes six gold pieces for each party of travelers. Please announce your point of origin. The mystical land of frolicking naked nymphs, where your every desire is granted by bald, blubbering bugbears. Hee hee hee. Candle keep, I guess. You'll have to wait here. My commander wishes to have a word with you. Okay. Citizens, please step forward. First off, let me introduce myself. I'm Scar, second in command of the Flaming Fist. Though it is not necessary for you to reveal your names, please answer me this. Are you the group that was involved in the fiasco at the Nashkel Mines? That was us. Well, I have to say you've made quite the commotion up here in Baldur's Gate can't really put my finger on a single source, but there have been many strange happenings going on within the city. It's been getting harder and harder for me to put trust in someone. I need outsiders to do some investigations. People with no connections to anyone within the city. Would you be interested in working for me in such a capacity? Sure. All right, then. What I'm about to tell you must be held in the strictest confidence. Do you understand? I need you to begin an investigation of the Seven Suns trading coster. The Seven Suns leadership has been acting strangely of late. They've been selling off valuable assets and neglecting many of their more profitable trading ventures. Considering the importance that the trading coster holds over the economy of the city, the Grand Dukes are noticeably upset. I've gone to talk to the coaster's head, Jasso. He rudely rebuffed me, telling me to mind my own business. I've known Jasso for many years and this isn't his usual behavior. I can't start up an official investigation, as there is no real reason for doing so. That's why I need you. We're ready to start. Tell us what we need to do and how much money you'll pay us to do it. We're ready to go for it, but there's something you need to know first. We think that the Iron Throne may be behind recent events along the coast. At the mines in Nashkel and in Cloakwood, we've learned much about the goals and methods of the Iron Throne. And it doesn't bode well for the future of this region. Yeah. Well, that sheds new light on things. There's nothing I can really do about it now, but I'll make sure to look into it. Well, thank you, Scar. You really are too nice to us. I want you to break into the Seven Suns compound and find out what's wrong. Use stealth in your investigations. I don't want this operation to cause too much fuss. The most important person to watch for is Jasso. 
Once you've found out as much as possible, report back to me at the Flaming Fist Compound. I'll pay you 2,000 gold for this favor. Deal. The estate is located on the southwest side of town. I wish all of you the best of luck. Remember, once you're done at the Seven Sons Estate, it's imperative that you meet me at the Flaming Fist Barracks, which are just west of the Seven Sons. Scar has hired us to investigate strange goings-on in the Seven Sons compound in the southwest section of the city. Quest. I smell a quest. <laughs> Quail. Hey ho there, fellow travelers. You look to be wanderers of the adventured sort. Tell me, what direction calls you? I am proceeding in a northerly direction this day. I'm heading south for a time. Uh, I would say south. Well, we have to keep going north first. I don't know. Let's just pick one. Ah, my loudest friends, that is my direction too. Fate has crossed our paths and we could all benefit by traveling together. It will be the classic pairing of you, the stalwart adventurers, and I, the intelligent one. How could you refuse? Whatever. Come if you must, but watch your mouth. Does that mean he'll join our group? I believe so, so how could I refuse? Watch me. Take us thou a hike. I should have guessed by your knuckle-dragging gait and minuscule nose, you're a complete and utter moron, aren't you? Wow. That was uncalled for. I've been a man named Quail near Baldur's Gate who requested he be allowed to join my party. It was the bum's rush I gave him, as he seemed a touch too smarmy for my liking. <laughs> Never seen that texture. That's pretty cool. Here we go, Baldur's Gate. Yes! Oh, cool, we can only access this front little part here right now. Well, if that didn't perfectly depict a giant city, I don't know what does. Elminster, good day to the young one. What a marvelous happenstance that we should again cross paths. Especially in such a grand city as this. Ah, I see by thine eyes that thou've no time for my rye banter. Tis true, our meeting was no accident. Though I do honestly take pleasure in seeing thee again. A pleasure I do not share. Leave me be, old man. It is good to see you again. What brings you here? Oh, all citizens of the Sword Coasts eventually passed through Baldur's Gate, and I knew thou wouldst as well. Forgive my continued meddling, but I believe it is warranted, especially considering the pressures thou art no doubt confronting. My pestering of thee certainly pales in comparison to the influence thou felt from others, including thine own self. Gorion raised thee as best he could, but tis hard indeed to overcome what is bred in the bone. Much more so in this case, I would imagine. So what is it you wish of me? What do you know of Gorion? He was long my friend, and we talked often. Though less after he settled down with thee. He was quite the traveler in his day, though he never regretted his new role as foster father. He felt a stable childhood would better prepare thee for, well, the problems that would eventually come. He cared deeply for thee. I hope this was not lost on you. Bah, Gorion was weak. I have no desire to follow in any parental footsteps. <laughs> he was a good man, though I would prefer to walk my own path. I was not suggesting that thou should do otherwise. Whatever the motives, independence is always a wise course to follow. My worry is that thy lineage is harder to escape than most. Thou've bad blood in thee, though Gorion did what he could to teach thee well and true. Thou've hungry blood within thee as well, and it will not let thee go without a fight. For better or worse, what's bred in the bone will be dealt with in time. I trust thou the will to face what is within thee. I will conquer all, whether from within or afar. I know little of what is to come, but I will do what is best. Yeah. I am sure the future will be kind to thee. For now, I will give thee my best wishes and a few names that will serve thee well. Scar of the Flaming Fist is a good man, and well worth trusting. His superior, Duke Elton, is also a good sort. Both are to be believed when they speak. I take my leave and wish thee well. Bye, Gandalf. I mean, uh, Elminster. 
journal updated. Again, Elminster has made an appearance, though he was a little more forthcoming with information this time. He apparently knew Gorian well and thought him a good man to take care for me. He also spoke of bad blood and a taint that will consume me if care is not taken. What this means, I am not sure. I will heed his warning, though. I have little time to dwell on it. He did give me some names of people he feels are trustworthy. Scar of the Fleming Fist and Duke Elton. I suppose I can believe them if Elminster himself does so recommend. All right, straight to the whore's den. Nobleman. Those Iron Throne fellows are quite the secretive bunch. Sedavok, the foster son of their leader, is quite the charmer, though. Journal updated. One of the sons of the Iron Throne's leader seems to be quite popular. The son's name is Seravok. Who's this, then? Niklos. Here, stop a moment. I've got a word or two you need to hear. Are you a fine group of mercenaries, are you? Leastwise, that the word on the street that you do the odd job here and there. I have a boss who'd like to have a word with you, if you could spare the time. You don't ask for free, though, and here be fifty gold just to hear him out. Fifty gold to listen, a fair deal. A wise choice of action. Now just follow me, and I'll show you the way to the guild. If you're asked the password, it's Fahird. When you're in the guild, just look for the man named Alatos Ravenscar. Theobald. Okay. Fafherd. Journal was updated. Good. Because I ain't going to remember that. Fafherd. A youngster named Nicholas gave me 50 gold to meet with the master. I am to follow him to a nondescript building and use Fafherd. Fafherd as a password. Yes, Already getting quests. This looks like a quest giver. Brevelic, hello. Shh, shh, shh. Um, I mean, hello. Might I have but a moment of your time? Ooh, this is exciting, isn't it? Oh, wait, you wouldn't think so. You're probably used to it. Ah, yes, well, um, you, uh, mm, uh, how do I approach this? You are, uh, for hire? I mean, I need a job done, get my intent, uh, a job done. Strictly hush hush, I believe you would say. Speak your mind, sir, so I might know your meaning. I should like to procure the talents for a uh, unique service, though it's not like you would have to do anything socially untoward, well, perhaps a bit, though not so much untoward as uh, to be illegal. Illegal, eh? What's in it for me? To take such a risk? What's the score, my little friend? <laughs> That's the spirit. A little larceny never hurt anyone. Well, it won't hurt me anyway, and to be fair, I would prefer to... I would prefer if no one else suffered any injury during this exploit. I mean, I want you to steal something, but I want you to do it in any nicest a way as possible. It's roguery on par with Danilio Thon of Waterdeep, and I'll pay you well. 500 gold for one night's work. It's better than you could hope for in a year on the docks. I have no wish to be famous from the jail cell. Take your offer and be gone. You can stop trying to sell me. I'm interested. Just tell me what the actual job is and why you are willing to take such a risk. Let's go for it. Oh, it's a marvelous trinket. A wondrously curious little toy from distant Lantan. Why do they call it, oh, yes, a telescope of all things. It's a misleading name for such an interestingly crafted artifact. Keeping them behind locked doors where loving hands cannot explore their subtleties. The telly what's it was made to be used, not worshipped. It must be in the hands of someone who can truly appreciate it. Not to be immodest, but that someone is me. I suppose I might buy a replica. But would you wish a copy of a diamond? It's just not the same. All right, pal. Get to the point. You would be advised to lower your standards before they land you in prison. The Hall of Wonders is nigh invulnerable, a vertebral fortress. I'll not risk my good name on such a foolhardy task. That makes me want to do it. I mean... My main character is a thief. I pretty much have to take this quest. That is certainly a difficult task that you set before me. 500 gold for all that? It's not a bad offer, though. I think you could do better. Let's try that. It's a risky venture. I'll grant you that. Perhaps I can sweeten the prospect a little. I will add a magical item from my own personal collection. It'll be difficult to part with one of my treasures, but definitely worth it. Will it suffice for you? Hmm. It's a start, though not nearly sweet enough to take the bitterness from my mouth. Should we keep going? Let's try it again. 
I'm afraid I simply must draw the line there. To trade two of my treasures for one would be the height of foolishness. The deal is as said so. As the saying goes, take it or leave it. All right, let's do it. This is certainly a difficult task you've set before me, you windy little man, but I will accept the challenge. Wonderful. Oh, this is so bad of me. <laughs> well, I shall leave you to your preparations. It will certainly be a test of your metal entering the hall. I imagined an experienced roustabout such as yourself will case the joint thoroughly, huh? Get the guards scheduled down and all that. Oh, if only I could be a part of it. It's thrilling, like the songs of legend. I'll meet you back here once the burglary is announced. <laughs> it's just too much fun. West. We have agreed to steal a telescope for a gnome named Brevlik. The telescope is located at the Hall of Wonders. Brevlik will be waiting for us at the Elf Song. The Elf Song Tavern. Cool. That's where we're at. We're in the Elf Song Tavern. A tavern of legend. Okay, we can also exit to the west here north and west. This may be the uh, Hall of Wonders. I'm not sure what this is. That's locked. Oh, Sorceress Sundries. Okay. Cool. Halbazar Drin. And who might you be then, hmm? Come to check out the wares of old Halbazer. We'll be quick about it, and mind you don't get fidgety when we talk payment. You knew when you came in the door that my wares were magical. Premium items demand a premium price. Let's see what you got. Ardulinian. Ah, wary adventurers, the roads of this fair city are lined with fools, are they not? And two of the greatest are Arakon and Nemphir. Archeon and Nemphir. Necromancers fighting over trinkets and baubles of little use or value. I assure you, they are more trouble than they are worth. You are better off steering clear of them. Archeon and Nymphir, okay. Journal was updated, that's good. The priest Ordulinian has passed on a strange warning regarding two necromancers engaged in a long-standing but petty feud. Their names are Archeon and Nymphir, and I have been advised to steer clear of the meddlings while in Baldur's Gate. Can we... Okay, that just leads up there. Let's try the upstairs. I guess this guy don't mind us poking around. Yes. Nimian. Nimain. Oh, look, what a cute little party invading our space. We were preparing a ritual, and you all but ruined it. What do you mean, your space? This is a store, and I'm a customer. Thank you for that wonderful display of Simeon logic. Now scram. What's a Simeon? For your information, a number of important sociological and psychological theorists have posited their stores exist in the intermediate space, neither private nor public in nature, but combining elements of both. Displays and store windows, for instance, can be best viewed as metal constructs projected onto the public's consciousness as a mean of engendering mass conformity derived solely from the supposedly private domain of consumer choice. <laughs> ah! It's enough to drive one mad. Make it stop! Make it stop! So he wants to fight us, seriously? Great. Go and get into a fight. And we're far enough away for a little fireball. Oh! Some of us are charmed. There it goes. Combat music was a little bit up behind. 1200. Oh, lots of stuff. Let's level up Ajantus, and then we'll call this an episode. 72. I didn't look to see what he had before, but 72 sounds good. Okay, we'll continue exploring Baldur's Gate on the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. You've been hanging out with Thunder Drummer, the man who has never ever made a Minecraft video. <laughs>